Hello guys, today as promised I am talking about what uh, what could be Studio Ghibli's last future film. Now, keep in mind, this is not, um, they haven't gone out and said that this is their last film, right? Because right now they're just taking a brief hiatus because of the retirement of Hayao Miyazaki. And the film I'm going to be talking about to you today is When Marnie Was There. Now, I knew the second I heard about this movie that I had to go and watch it and support Studio Ghibli because they they made some of my favorite animated films of all time, of course. they This is the company that Hayao Miyazaki worked for. The same one that made films like Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Castle in the Sky, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, The Wind Rises, Kiki's Delivery Service, so many amazing films. I mean, I'm wearing a Princess Mononoke t-shirt right now. I'm, I'm wearing it just for this review because that's how much I love Studio Ghibli. And if this is going to be the last film they make, I am sad because it is one of the best I have seen from them. The film starts out with um, a very introverted girl named Anna who, um, because of her, who, uh, uh, is really, she doesn't get a um, talk to people really well. She doesn't have any friends. She's really, really shy and keeps to herself. Um, but because of her asthma, a doctor recommends to her foster mother, yes, she is not, she doesn't have her parents around anymore, that she uh, go to this small village um, where some family friends are staying so that she can, you know, get get that a little better and breathe some fresh air and when she gets there she ends up um, stumble not stumbling upon but she finds this uh, mansion in the marsh in a marsh and um, she keeps finding herself coming back to it like she keeps finding herself drawn to it and wanting to go to it and she and she even sketches it in her book and eventually she sees the form of a girl named Marnie in the window and when, and when she uh, becomes friends with her, it leads to an epic mystery, a great friendship, and prop, and one of the saddest stories I have ever seen in a kid's movie. Now, this is definitely one of the best movies I've seen this year, and it would be a crime for me not to put it in my best of the year list at the end of the year. Because, it's, because the animation is just amazing in this movie. And it's kind of sad that nowadays we don't see a lot of 2D animation anymore in in the West. For the most part, we only see like 3D animation. And my theories are because it's probably easier because you don't have to hand draw everything. You do have to do, you know, um, pr preliminary sketches and whatnot. But you don't have to actually draw out every single scene in a movie. You can just animate it with your CG and whatnot. And probably because kids likes 3D animation more nowadays. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing here. And it sucks because uh, I, because most really good Western entertainment, the only really good stuff that even comes out of Western um, animation anymore is either from Disney or Pixar. There are a few exceptions. I don't hate on me there. There are a few exceptions. I will give you that much. But for the most part, that's it. Those are really the only two companies. I And it's kind of sad. Now, I don't disagree with some of the fun, kind of crazy Western animated feature films. Because they're fun to have at, like, parties and stuff. You know, for kids to just have a fun time with. But something like this film that's just... It's just really good. And it really tries to do stuff differently. If your kids are mature enough... You should be having them see these films. Not once in the when in the theater I was at watching this. Not one, I didn't see one ch child there or one parent or anything. It was basically all older people in there, and I was like probably the only one in there under twenty years old. And it's kind of sad that I was the only one there that was under twenty years old, because if yeah, if your kids are you think your kids are mature enough, you should have them watch these. I wish when I was little I had discovered more of the Studio Ghibli films when I because the only one I really only saw was saw when I was little was Spirited Away 
And that was the only one. And I loved that movie when I was little. And, yeah, I mean, those are all just... And I... I... It's honestly... I honestly wish I had discovered it sooner. Another one of the things I really loved about this film was that in Studio True Ghib Studio Ghibli fashion, it's pretty, like, mysterious. It doesn't explain everything, like, just everything's right here, you know, in front of you, and you know what's happening. It really tries to, you know, make you think about the movie, and not a lot of movies anymore make you think about stuff. And I... and is really something I like when a movie does that. Also, I wanted to say that uh, in another uh, trope of Sue Ghibli, it's like it has like supernatural elements mixed in to the mystery to make it more engaging, and I really like that. I really like when Sue Ghibli, Ghibli <laughs> does their films like that. Now, I think Studio Ghibli has outdone themselves when it comes to the animation in this movie because it's some of the best I've seen in a movie for years. I am not even kidding right now. It also um, just presents this great story because so many times I, I was just stunned at some of the points and messages it had in this film. I was just, I was just like, oh my gosh. At some points, I, my mouth was like open like this. And the ending of this film, I'm going to be honest with you, it's it's so sad. There were, like, tears in my eyes when I was watching the ending of this film. It It's really good. I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it. But just know, it's amazing. You have to watch this movie. These films are the kind of films that kids should be watching today because it just presents so much suspense and mystery Feel, like, really feel-good moments, happy moments, and sad, really, really sad moments. It doesn't paint the world as this perfect place with superheroes and just happy going on around. It makes it a really realistic-looking world that we live in today. And it just, it, I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna say it again because it's one of the best parts of it. The animation is gorgeous it was just so nice to it was just so pleasant to my eyes to watch it and it's hand-drawn 2d animated like someone took time to draw every single frame of this movie it's just so amazing oh my gosh it's just so good guys if you can find this movie in a theater near you i implore you to go watch it it is worth your time and your money and the only place I was even able to find this in when I was in Denver was at the Mayan theater so I really want to thank that theater for showing this movie because I am just so happy that they did now some um, last uh, thoughts um, on the movie that I, I kind of want to talk about at the end because they weren't important to the movie necessarily but um I thought it was interesting that in one part of the scene in one part of the movie it's really brief, but for a few sentences, I heard, um, it's a really minor character, uh, n not minor when it comes to plot, but, you know, minor as in it, uh, this person doesn't get a lot of voice time, and it's shown in a flashback, but for two seconds, I heard the voice, and if you've been watching my channel recently, I just uploaded a Last of Us analysis, so I kind of still have that uh, looming in my head, The Last of Us, because I played it twice already. But two seconds, I heard the voice of Ashley Johnson, and I'm like, who? And I was like so confused, because I knew I had heard the voice before, so I was thinking, where have I heard that? And I'm like, holy crap, that was Ashley Johnson! And it's just really off topic, but I was just surprised that she had a voice in this movie. It was just really interesting. It was kind of cool. And... If I had to have really one flaw, and this would be really nitpicky and not uh, really a flaw at all because it gets resolved later, but it's kind of a little bit too mysterious. Sometimes you, you're kind of confused as to what's going on. It's not straight up, um, can't remember the guy's name now, it's not straight up David Lynch <laughs> uh, mysterious, but it's, it's still mysterious in its own way. 
but by the end of the movie, all the answers are solved, and you it's not, and all, all questions are answered, and it, it honestly doesn't become a flaw by then. It's really not a flaw at all, actually. Altogether, guys, When Marnie Was There is just a great movie, and I am happy to tell you guys that this movie is pure amazingness. <laughs> Again, guys, please go see this movie. If you can find it, go see it right now. It is worth. It's worth it. Gonna, I'm just saying that it's worth it. Um, as always, guys, uh, if you want to know, uh, see more Studio Ghibli films, uh, especially the ones I mentioned in my review, uh, go check them out. Honestly, they're some of the best animated films I've ever seen. Uh, all it takes is a quick wiki search. You can find a list of their films pretty easy. Um, and while I haven't watched all the Studio Ghibli films yet, I've watched a majority of them. They're all really good. And I have a huge collection of um, Studio Ghibli Blu-rays right now. I'm pretty satisfied with it right now. Also, while we're on the topic of Studio Ghibli, I, right now I am actually watching this cool little documentary on Netflix about Studio Ghibli. And I think it's interesting so far. I haven't finished it yet. But you should go check that out if you're also a fan of Ghibli in general. And as always, guys, again, go see this movie. And don't forget to love animation. <laughs>